Welcome to our Ask the People Science Experts event. We're excited to have you join us. I want to thank you for your patience as we worked out some technical issues. So this is a series we've been doing with our customers for the past few months. It's been really valuable to connect with each other and learn during these turbulent times. So we decided to bring this to our broader LinkedIn community to provide you and more leaders with the chance to hear some solutions and hopefully some inspiration to help you survive or even thrive in this current environment. So I'll be your host for today. I'm Stacy Levine. I'm a senior consultant with Glint's People Science team. I'm really excited to be joined by Lori Moser. Lori is the head of people experience and engagement at Bristol Myers Squibb. And she's gonna talk about how they've been supporting their people during the pandemic. Welcome, Lori. It's great to have you. Hi, Stacey. I'm thrilled to be here. Thanks. So, Lori, tell us a little bit more about you and your role at Bristol Myers Squibb. Yeah, sure. So, I work in HR um, in the Center of Excellence. And one of my particular passions, as well as what I'm responsible, is for our engagement strategy at the company. Great. Thanks, Lori. So let's jump into the topic at hand. As a reminder to everyone in the audience, we'll have plenty of time to answer your questions at the end. So please feel free to drop your questions into the comments section at any point throughout this broadcast. Um, so Lori, let's get started. So as a leader of the People Experience and Engagement Team, what's been your journey in terms of collecting employee feedback prior to the pandemic? Yeah. So at Bristol Myers Squibb, um, for a while we've been doing an annual um, engagement survey um, at least for four or five years. And basically it was a, one engagement survey every year, about 40 questions. Um, we did not have comments and um, you know, we knew we needed to switch things up. Um, in early 2019 in January, um, there was an announcement made that we were going to integrate with Celgene. And as an HR organization, we were looking at how do we support it? And we did a lot of research and really realized that engagement was going to be a roller coaster dur during an M&A. Mm -hmm. And we realized we really needed to figure out how to tap into employee sentiment more real time so that we can respond and maintain engagement throughout the organization. I think we, we realized that what some of the things we read that it takes about 36 months for that once the engagement close, um, sorry, once the integration, um, once we close, engagement's going to drop and it's mm -hmm. going to take about 36 months to recover. Yeah. So tell me about the decision process and why your team decided um, to send out an engagement survey during such you know a time of distress. Yeah. So. As part of our strategy, that was really as part of our strategy that was related to the integration, um, we decided to do an initial baseline pulse in December, and we would only ask 16 questions. We would leverage the Glint technology, which was new for us, um, and also collect comments. So we took a baseline engagement strat, um, uh, in December, and then we were always going to pulse again in March and really share that data with our managers. So the engagement survey was targeted to go out on a Monday. And the Thursday before that Monday, the CEO made an announcement that, uh, and this was mid-March, um, the CEO made an announcement that all non-essential workers needed to work remotely and the sites were closed to non-essentials. Mm -hmm. And that was a big deal. So there was a debate on, you know, what do we do? This is like our first big engagement survey that we're sending out other than the baseline. Do we still send it out? Um, does it make sense during COVID, you know, because everybody's stressed out about COVID. Um, and we had a debate the entire weekend. Um, what we decided is a couple things. The first is we looked at the questions and we said, hey, you know, does COVID change how, you know, what we want to ask people when it, you know, we still want to know, you know, are you happy working here? Um, you know, do you, you know, how do you feel about our company strategy and our mission? So we realized those are still important questions, regardless of COVID or not. And then the other thing we realized is we need to kind of keep some sense of normalcy. Um, we wanted to stay connected now with employees more than ever because a lot of those employees are not going to be on site. So how do we stay connected? And we really wanted to know how they were responding to COVID. So based on all those data points, we said, you know what? 
the questions still look okay. Um, let's send the survey out anyway. We didn't send it out on that Monday. Instead, we tweaked how we messaged it. And we were honest. We said, listen, we care about how you feel and we care about your engagement. And we want to know what's going on with COVID. So we sent it out on that Thursday, but we added three additional questions, actually three additional questions, and then one open text comment box to un that, were, that was specifically related to COVID. So not only were we collecting data around engagement, but we were also collecting data, data around COVID. And I have to tell you, it, it was a bit of a debate on what to do, but I'm glad we ended up doing it. That's really great to hear. And I'm sure your employees appreciated um, the fact that you were asking them how they were doing during this time and not shying away from that conversation. So um, were there lessons that you learned when you read the comments? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what was really great for us is we launched the survey. You know, we were asking questions about COVID and engagement. And we saw um, all this information rolling in real time. And so, you know, and everybody, it, it was funny because um, Maria Hassan, who works on my team that helps support uh, the Pulse survey, we were, we were kind of making jokes. We became the most popular people in the organization because everybody wanted to understand how were employees feeling during this time of distress and what were we learning? Some of the first findings we found was that employees were really, really stressed out about trying to continue to be productive as, you know, everybody wants to be a high performer. So, how, you know, being a high performer still at work, but now working in a different environment, but also being a high performer at home, um, taking care of their family, taking care of themselves. And they were really, really stressed out about that. They, they were having a difficult time dealing with it. So that was the first thing we learned. Um, the second thing we saw in our word cloud with all our comments was a big word monitor, which turns out that a lot of people uh, wish they still had their monitors <laughs> that they left in the office at home. Um, so, so that was another thing we saw. Um, the other thing that was really interesting was that we started seeing all of our questions trend upwards, which is not what we expected. We expected to see actually, you know, either a stabilization or decline because of what was going on with the acquisition, the merger and acquisition. Um, and we saw all our questions trend upwards. And what we kept reading about was this sense of pride, um, people really felt good that the that leaders were responding to the feedback that they were providing as we were feeding it um, to our leadership team and the communications team. And, and they really took pride in our organization and they were really thankful um, for how BMS was responding to COVID. Um, and in the end, our engagement scores just, I think I might've cut out, our engagement scores jumped by four points, which was really, really great. That's, that's wonderful. So I'm curious, you know, given that you have a combination of both essential workers who stayed on site um, and also remote workers, you know, what were some of the different points of feedback that you heard? And I'm curious, you know, how did that impact the actions that you took for each group? Yeah. So I think like I mentioned, for example, the monitor, right? We saw that um, people wish they had their monitors at home for our non-essential workers. Um, IT quickly responded by sending out a communication on how you can order office supplies and monitors at home to work more effectively. Um, we also, very early on, um, you know, when it initially launched and we weren't getting that feedback um, from, from the survey, there was, we were kind of shifting towards, you know, the funny part of working from home. Like, you know, my cat's walking across my computer or look, I have my dog in the background. But when we started seeing the survey results of the essential workers, you know, some people felt that some of our Yammer groups or our kidding around about working from home was kind of tone deaf. And it made us realize that we really needed to shift our communication strategy and let people know that there are people that are still going into the office um, who, are, who are stressed out about themselves, they're stressed out about their families, and you know, you know, we should not be over-indexing on working from home. 
And, and that really changed, you know, how we think about things. And now every time we open up either a town hall or a communication, we always thank the essential workers for going on site. Um, and it really kind of changed our communication strategy. That's great. So what's next for Bristol Myers Squibb? Are you planning to do another Pulse? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so just recently, uh, we were doing more of a deep dive in our analysis. Like, so after the survey closed, we immediately sent the results. We were sending, you know, information to the leadership team during the survey so people knew what was going on with COVID. But we did do a deep dive just recently to, to get a little bit more into the weeds on what people were saying. And we, we talked to our leadership team and we said, hey, we want to do a pulse mid-June and we want to include COVID questions. You know, are you all aligned? Did you agree with that? And everybody was like, absolutely, it's the right thing to do. So we'll be sending another pulse out in mid-June. That's great. Are there any um, topics or things that you think you might cover in your next pulse? Um, so what we're going to stick to is the same engagement questions that we, we initially started with because those are really core and fundamental to the company. And, um, but, and we're also going to continue with our same COVID-19 questions. We felt mm -hmm. that they were... Um, they were really, really helpful. And regardless of whether we're in um, a response mode or recovery mode, we think they'll be really, really insightful. A lot of the data and information we took um, not only helped us in our response to COVID-19, but as we start moving to re recovery, there's a lot of great insights we're using to develop that. And we feel now when we pulse again mid-June, uh, the situation is so fluid, we'll get a, additional insights and that will really help us refine our recovery strategy. That's great. So um, what's your advice to organizations who are maybe on the fence or you know, waiting to pulse until they feel that things are more stable? Yeah, absolutely do it, pulse. If you're thinking about it, you really should. And if you're not thinking about it, you should consider it. Um, the information was so insightful and it was stuff that we probably would have never realized if we didn't pulse and, and employees really, really appreciate it. So I, I would, I would definitely recommend pulse on, on engagement and pulse on COVID to get a better understanding of what your organization's going through. Thanks, Lori. That's really great insight. Um, I really appreciate it. And I know we could keep chatting um, for <laughs> another hour, but um, I know we have some questions from the audience that we want to sure. make sure we have time to get to. So as a reminder to everyone um, watching, you can put your questions into the comments section at any time. Um, so we're going to start by looking at some of the questions we've been sourcing from our People Success Forum group on LinkedIn. Um, for anyone who's not part of this group, the People Success Forum is a chance for HR leaders around the globe to share best practices, give each other advice and support during this time. Um, and we've shared a link to that group in the comments if you wanna join us. Uh, so we'll start and look at some of the comments that we've been getting. Um, just to start with, you know, one of the questions that's come in through the People Success Forum um, is around, you know, concern for both physical health, but also mental well-being. Um, so, Lori, you know, I wanted to hear your thoughts around how you asked about both um, physical safety and well-being, but also mental well-being. Yeah, what's what's interesting is we do not have a specific question around physical well-being or mental well-being. Um, we chose, because we're trying to limit the number of questions in our survey, we tend to ask more holistic type of questions. So in regards to COVID-19, actually I have them written here. Um, we asked, BMS does a good job communicating with employees. I am satisfied with BMS's response. I have resources I need to do my job. And what else is on your mind? An open text uh, kind of comment box. Mm -hmm. And the resources question, also the overall response question, and what else is on your mind? With those three questions, we got so many comments around, um, you know, see some safety concerns, some just mental well-being concerns that we were able to really kind of um, get an understanding of what's going on and 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 provide that to our leadership team as well as our HR COEs. Um, so for example, um, we knew that people were really stressed out um, and we're trying to figure out how to manage workload. 
Um, so a couple things we did, we, and you know, they were worried about family members too. Um, we really kind of pr promoted our EAP programs. We did a manager session. Um, it's called a manager form specifically on COVID to help coach managers on how to work with employees and let them know that, you know, their employees were really stressed out. And I think one of the comments that I read in, and I provided this feedback in the manager forms, the employee was like, listen, I'm really trying to do a good job at work. I'm really trying to do a good job at home. I'm very, very stressed out. I wish my manager would just say, it's okay, you're doing good. And, you know, um, and just by providing that feedback to managers, it really, really resonated. Um, so, so that's the type of, you know, information, that's how we use the comments to collect this information. Mm -hmm. I was so surprised about how many well thought out comments came in on that open ended question of what else is on your mind. Um, lots of really great insight. That's great. Yeah, I think the, the question of just how are you doing, um, as we've used in our own uh, LinkedIn surveys has been so insightful. So um, one of the things that we're getting questions around is around how to keep people on track, you know, how to help people prioritize. Mm -hmm. uh, how have you helped people with their shifting priorities and keep focused on what matters? Yeah, so that was a topic that we saw um, as well in our survey um, that people were feeling overwhelmed and there were too many priorities and especially actually what was interesting is when we looked at the data from a leadership perspective our top 200 leaders were really concerned about that so what we've been doing is really you know as a company you know talking about making sure our efforts are focused on what's really critical and really having that dialogue on, on you know what we really should be focused on and and what you know what we really need to do and really mm -hmm. try to take things off of people's plates so we've been doing that um, to, to help provide a sense of prioritization. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, you know, another question that we've gotten is, you know, if we can't fix everything that people are frustrated about, so, um, you know, something like layoffs that we can't control, um, what, what do we focus on? You know, what do we do when we can't fix everything that's on people's minds? Yeah, you know, that's a really tough one. Um, you, you just can't, right? And I think as long as you're transparent and um, our that's what our leadership team has been doing. They've been really transparent about um, everything they do know and what they don't know. And, you know, you hear a lot and I think this resonates with people. You know, this is the first time we're all in a global pandemic. We don't have all the answers. We're, we're working through it. We hear you. And, you know, at, as soon as we make progress or we know something, we will let you know. So, so that's, kind of our philosophy. Mm -hmm. That's great. And that, I think there's um, something to be said for that level of transparency of, you know, admitting that you don't have all the answers, but that you're yeah. figuring it out uh, with their best interests at part. So um, we have a question from Olivier that I want to ask. Um, in this very particular period, did you ask any open-ended questions? And what did you learn from these? So the open-ended items, what did they teach you? Yeah, so we did. We had the open ended question on um, what else is on your mind. And I was really so I was really surprised about how many people responded to that question. And it wasn't just like one or you know, one sentence, it was paragraphs. I think probably the biggest thing that I got out of that is that people were really, really um proud of how our company and thankful for how our company was responding um, to COVID-19 and making clear decisions on, you know, telling people not to come in, uh, stay from, stay at home. Um, mm -hmm. They really were thankful about um, um, us soliciting feedback and wanting to hear from them. Um, so, so that was really, I, I know it, it was really, really interesting because usually when you see comments, you tend to see more of a negative spin, but it was more about pride and being grateful and thankful. And um, the other thing that we saw, which I mentioned before quite a bit, is just being really stressed out and trying to figure, you know, being thankful for the company on, on providing us with workplace place flexibility, um, or sorry, providing us, uh, providing the ability to flex our work schedules, but also um, 
but also, you know, acknowledging that, you know, they are stressed out during these mm -hmm. pandemics. And that's where we kind of were able to coach our managers. That's great. So we have a question from Heidi. Um, she's asking for some more information around the insights that you learned when you looked at your on-site versus your uh, remote employees. Yeah, um, I think when we looked at our scores, um, you know, overall, I think uh, they were they were pretty high overall. When we looked at the groups that we know had some on-site employees, it was a little bit lower, um, but still pretty good response. Um, and that's where we heard things around, um, for example, uh, decision making about what's essential versus non-essential workers. And so we were able to provide clarity around that. Um, some some are very early on some comments around, you know, can we change out shift schedules? Um, or, you know, I'm concerned about I have somebody at home who ha who's diabetic and I have to go on site, you know, um, what can I do? So there were things like that. And we were able to respond to that. So that, that's the type of feedback that we saw. And we were able to do that from the people that worked at in are working at home, our non-essential workers. Um, it was more along the insights we were getting was more around, um, like I said, computer laptops, things like that. A lot of comments around, I feel like the day never ends. <laughs> how do we, how do I stop the day? <laughs> um, <laughs> And so, you know, or how, you know, I'm trying to, we, you see child a lot in the world, word clouds as well. You know, how do I, I have a small child um, who's in the first grade and, and now is, is trying to do remote learning. How do I do this? So again, we are, we talk to managers, we talk about providing people the flexibility to take care of their, you know, personal needs um, as, as well as, you know, balancing it with, you um, at home working. That's great. So a question we have from Tim. Um, Tim is asking if we have recommendations for how companies can continue to innovate and push the boundaries in their field. So how you continue to innovate at Bristol Myers Squibb, despite having a workforce that can't collaborate um, in an office setting. Yeah, I mean, there's lots, of, there's so much you can do. And I feel like, um, you know, for for us, you know, we are innovating every day and figuring out how to, how to build connections across, um, how to build connections with our team um, online um, and, and learning about, you know, trying different things out, taking a little bit of risk, like doing this survey was considered a little risky and we are so glad we did. So I think a lot of it is around just trying to stay connected with people, um, having that dialogue, um, lots of good discussion, and and really learning from each other on how to improve things. Yeah, that's great advice. Um, so we also have a question um, from Jim around: Have you started to create a return to workforce um, to workplace plan for your remote workers? And um, have you started to think about what steps you might take to ensure employees feel safe? Yeah, um, so there, uh, Bristol Myers Squibb has a whole team that's involved in, um, they're called the recovery team, and there's this mm -hmm. massive plan, uh, massive steps in the plan on how to bring the workforce back, um, mm -hmm. uh, back to normal. Um, so, so, it, it, I think it was like 130 pages. It, it's quite robust. And so, yes, we've started planning and um, we're also looking at, you know, different uh, parts of the world um, mm -hmm. are at, are adjusting to COVID at different, you know, some, some countries are actually um, are, are recovering more so than other countries. So, so we're, we're looking at it um, country by country basis, site by site basis. Okay. Yeah, that's helpful. Um, we have a question as well from uh, Kirsten. She's asking about um, what kind of scoring metrics that you used. Um, and, you know, for example, did you use uh, questions with a one to five scale? Yeah. Um, and also, were you able to analyze the text, you know, the verbatim comments? Yeah, absolutely. So for, uh, for all of our questions, regardless of COVID or engagement, except for the one what else question, we use a one to five 
scale, we have open then comments for every single question. Um, so, so we used both. Um, we looked, so what was interesting with COVID because our scores were pretty high um, and they were all very similar, very high and, and the high end, that's where comments became really, really powerful because mm -hmm you know, even one or two comments could be really insightful and provide you some prescriptive feedback where you can really do something different that maybe somebody else didn't think of. So definitely for, for COVID, the, the comments provided um, really um, helped us develop our strategy. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a great point about the prescriptive comments. Um, I find when I read comments, you know, the way Glint will characterize them as prescriptive has been really helpful because uh, this is a new situation for everyone. And I think employees have ideas that they're putting forth around what would help them um, to, you know, be able to thrive in this environment. Yeah. It, it's not necessarily, it's not necessarily about themes. It's like looking for that one really great idea that we can run with. Yep. Um, just one last question. Any um, other differences you've been noticing between your essential and remote employees' reactions to the um, to the pandemic? Anything else that has come out? I, I think we covered most of it. I mean, like I said, uh, what also I think is really interesting too is um, you know our our non-essential workers are really acknowledging the sacrifice our essential workers are making. And even I think the other day I was looking on our, our internal website, and I think one of our organizations had a whole thank you to our essential workers because they know how important they are and, and what they do. So it, it, it's kind of, it's really interesting. I mean, um, we're really kind of seeing that sense of community and, and being thankful and, acknowledging how everybody contributes. That's great. That's really great. Um, so I'm going to um, cut us off here. These questions have been great. Um, it's unfortunate that we have to wrap up. Um, if we didn't get to your question today, I'd recommend that you go over to the People Success Forum on LinkedIn and um, put your questions there so that other HR leaders and some of the Glint People Science team, we can um, answer your questions. I want to thank Lori for being with me today. Uh, I really appreciate you being part of our Ask the People Science Experts fireside chat. Uh, thank you so much, Stacey. It's been great. So for next week's event, we have a great episode planned. The head of people science, uh, strategic development, Amy Lavoie, who you may have seen in our first Ask the People Science Expert series. Um, she'll be joined by Mark Straitsman from our people science team to um, discuss how to support managers in times of distress. So please um, visit the upcoming event section on the Glint Company page on LinkedIn to register for that event. And you can also look at our um, upcoming topics in the coming weeks. So also, I just want to thank you in the audience for listening and participating in today's sessions. Uh, we hope to see you at next week's session and have a great day.